So we're here today with Miss Kathy Taylor. Uh, she's promoting her Refresh Her conference. And she's going to talk to us a little bit about her purpose. She's going to talk to us about the conference. And she's going to also talk to us about some of the things that she's doing outside of her music. So thank you so much for being with us today, Ms. Thank Taylor. you so much for having me. I appreciate you. I appreciate you finding the time. Glad to be here. So uh, recently I, I saw an interview with, uh, with you and Deborah Duncan. Yes. And uh, you talked about adopting children. Yes. I want to know a little bit about that. Um, what led you to that? And um, also, I want to talk about prayer okay. and the prayers that we have for our children and the prayers that your mother had for you. So you can tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, certainly, I, I, I considered adopting children many years ago, and um, I didn't. So, you know, I really thought that that part of my life was over, and I was just going on about my daily life. I thought my life was full. Uh, I thought I was fulfilled in every way. And one day I saw these two beautiful little girls who needed a home. And the Lord spoke to me just like as clear as I'm speaking to you right now. Are you going to just sing my gospel or are you going to do my gospel? So I began to uh, take time with these two and uh, invest in these two and they end up being my two. So now they live in my home, I'm mommy, my husband's dad, and um, it's just, I, I found love in a whole new way, you know. I thought I was fulfilled until now. Now I am fulfilled, you know. You know, I, I told one of my friends I've never known a love like this. Mm. So um, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity. And as you know, if, since you are a parent, you know, God trusts you a whole lot, that he would trust you with the next generation. And so and that's how I take it. And then when you talk about prayer, um, when I was a little girl, well, to, to make a long story longer, uh, my mom's mother was a singer in their city. And she died when my mom was 13. So when my mom began to have kids, she asked the Lord, to let one of her kids be a singer. And one day I was on the piano playing and singing, the Lord told her that's her, and she'll carry this gospel to the world through song. So I am a product of my mom's prayers. And so for my two little ones, I have prayers that I pray. One, one that they are, they are great citizens and a contribution to the world and not a liability to the world, you know. Two, that they love God with all their heart, and their mind, and their soul. And they find their purpose and follow their purpose. Not what I want them to do, but what God has called them to do. And, you know, and one of my prayers, too, that, I, you know, I, I, we want to be perfect parents. But I just ask the Lord to just let me be a good parent, you know. Because we're going to make mistakes. And to those who are parenting, you're going to make mistakes. We want to be a superwoman and do it all well. But you know, And it's okay to get a little help to be superwoman, you know. But And, and, and even in that, you're going to make mistakes. But know that God's grace is sufficient. That That's, that's my little spiel on adoption and uh, praying for the children. Mm, that's beautiful. And so going back to purpose. Yes. Okay. How, tell us about how or what that process was like for you to decide to walk in your purpose because your purpose is to spread the gospel and spread love but a lot of us aren't able to even find our purpose, let alone fulfill that purpose. So can you tell us about that? Yes, first of all, you know, finding your purpose, um, I think some of us have that kind of misconstrued, and I think Michelle Obama said it best in her book. You know, if you just think you get to some plateau and that's who you are, then, you know, that's not really your purpose for life long. It may be your purpose for a moment. Mm -hmm. A fleeting moment, you know. So we have to keep under hearing God and where we are and what is our job and our assignment for the day. Mm. You know, like, because at one point, my assignment may have been one thing. 
But then, they, you know, she basically said at one point, my assignment was to be first lady of the United States of America. Another, she's a mom. Another one, now she's empowering women, you know. Right. So your purpose may change, mm -hmm. but you have to stay in sync with God so you can shift as your purpose shifts. Don't get to one thing and one plateau and think that's the end all to be all. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm a firm believer in the fact that we cannot be what we cannot see. And so the refresher conference, I feel like that's so important uh, for women to feel empowered. Can you tell the people why you feel refresh her is important for the empowerment of women? Okay, my, one of my assignments right now is not only to empower my generation, but the generations behind me. And the Refresher Conference is one of the ways we're going to do that. First of all, women, we need to come together and love on each other. Because we, we give so much in the community, in the home, and, and in the workplace. So it's, you know, sometimes you have to come together and refuel, refine, reach, reset. You know, so you can, I, I'm better when I've gotten some time. I'm a better mom, I'm a better wife, I'm a better minister of music, I'm a better singer when I've had that time to refuel and refresh myself. Absolutely. You know, so that's what this is going to do. And then, it's, and then for the young woman, uh, we have some classes like uh, Write the Vision, Live the Dream. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some, uh, one class called Squad Goals. How do you pick the friends right. that that's in your that's circle? You. Yes. Right. So we got some classes for every. We have a class by uh, Dr. Mott who's talking about maturing gracefully. Hmm. You know, how to do it and wear it well. Hmm. You know, so, so every step, every step of the Yes, yeah. yes. Every aspect of womanhood we have hoped to address this time. And then what's so cool, uh, we have Devon uh, Franklin coming mm -hmm. who has this book coming out, um, uh, what you need to know about a man. You know, because so many of us yeah. have, didn't have a man in our household, exactly. So and, and then we say we want a husband, yeah. and we think that's going to be the end all, the be all, it's going to fix all, right. and we don't even know how to interact with men. We right. don't even know how to talk to a man. We don't know how to treat mm. a man, a real man, a real man. you know. Because and some, some, some of us have uh, warped definitions of man. So I, I I think what what a bet what that's the greatest place to talk about it in the house in the house around Christian women where we can delve delve into real conversation about that. I love that. So he's gonna speak about it and then we're gonna get to conversation about it and then I've had some real men to come. Hmm. Don't come to that session so that we can ask the questions we need and they can give us some information. That's awesome. That's awesome. So as a mom, we you know, we discussed that. That's our, we have that bond. Yes. Um, but I'm a mother of a little boy. Yes. And so it's so important for me, for him to have leadership and guidance. And so I read up on Mufasa's pride. Yes. And I just want you to tell the people why it's, it's, it's so vitally important, right, that we support our women, but our boys and our men that are leading yes. this charge, right? That are leading our households. That you know, we're 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 pushing behind. They need that support too. So, can you talk a little bit about Mufasa's pride and why it's so important for us to also support our boys and our men? Mufasa's pride is a group my husband um, uh, birthed through. Um, he saw on. TV where a little boy was killed on his way home from school by gangs in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And his spirit just said, oh, so when are you going to get up and do something about it? You know, so he wanted to do something about it in his area. So now he mentors about 80 boys every other weekend. Um, what they do is empower them to be men. What they have, uh, what's really fun is they have something called the hot seat. So if you showed up through the week and, and your parent has called to talk about it, well, they sit you in front of everybody and they talk about it as men. Accountability. Yes. It. So it's it's uh it's it's a great program. They also travel the country. Uh, he likes to take them to see some some of the boys would not go out of the city if had it not been for Mufasa's pride. They've gone to New York, D.C. Um, 
Philadelphia, Selma, uh, Atlanta, and on their trips they also see colleges. And we've had uh, at least five boys. Uh, one boy sat on the steps of Morehouse, and he said, "So, Mr. Andre, you think I can go here one day?" I want you to know last year that boy who lived in the car with his mother graduated from Morehouse and now he's an executive at Big Brothers Good Big Sisters. So those are the kind we have he has with Mufasa's Pride a hundred percent rate of high school graduates and a 95% rate of people, of black American boys, going on to higher education. Wow. Yes. Oh, that is so amazing. That is yes, so is. amazing. So, uh, the title of your new album is God, God is, with, is us. with Us. Yes. yes. Tell us why we need to be reminded of that in this time in this climate yes uh you just you hit the nail right on the head uh people are walking around in devastation and we are so accustomed to devastation until we don't even re recognize devastation as normal well i found myself in that place and the only thing that shook me and br made me be able to breathe and feel again is the pastor preached that sermon God is with us. Be of good courage. God is with us. And then that same scripture, uh, God makes a promise. I will not leave you nor forsake you. So in that devastating place, seemed like when I heard that word from God, I could wake up and be refreshed and refueled and refine and I want to share that share that uh, moment with the world because of the wor the way we are today we have to remember it's almost like I can imagine our forefathers felt when they were in slavery when all this was going on they had to have something down on the inside to make them walk this out and that's we have that same power on the inside of us so we got to walk this out so it's comforting and and it gives you confidence to know God is with us.